helping people cope with and overcome life's challenges. This is Life Transformations with Michael Hart, Canadian Certified Counselor and Award-Winning Psychotherapist. Hi, this is Michael Hart of Elim Counseling Services, and I want to thank you for joining us in this episode of the Life Transformation Radio Show. Yes, it's that time of the year where we are thinking about the new year, making plans and thinking about goals for the new year. So it's no surprise that today's show is about New Year's resolution. Yes, we want to help you in your endeavor to change your life, to make you more successful in keeping your New Year's resolution. So we are going to be giving out some strategies that's going to be able to help you to to keep those New Year's resolution. But before we go into today's show, let me welcome all our listeners, all our faithful listeners. Thank you very much for joining us again in this episode of the Life Transformation Radio Show. For those of you who are first-time listeners, Elim is a professional counseling organization that provides professional counseling from a Christian perspective. We provide counseling at a subsidized rate. If you'd like to find out more about Elim, you can do so by going to our website at elimcounselingministry.com. Elim is spelled E-L-I-M, counseling with two L's, ministry.com. You can also give us a call at 613-699-1677. I'd also like to let you know that all our uh, past episodes can be found on our website. By by going to our website, you can you can listen to past episodes. If you're one of those persons who like to have a CD so you can play in your car while you're driving, you can send in a request for this show or any other show for a free CD of the episode by calling us at 613 one six seven seven. All we ask is for a donation to cover the cost of, of producing the CD or just a donation to our ministry. Again, you can do so by calling us at six one three six nine nine one six seven seven. And without, without further ado, I'd like to welcome uh, Melissa again to this show. This show would not be the same without Melissa. So, Melissa, thank you very much for being with us here again to, to talk about this very important topic. You're very welcome, Mike. Michael, and I'm very excited to get these tips we were talking before we started this show about different types of resolutions you and I have done in the past. So I'm really, really counting on you to make my resolutions for this year stick hopefully a little longer than they have in the past. So if you're one of those persons who have failed so so far in making resolutions and you have come to this point where your resolution for next year is that you are not going to make a resolution, we're going to help you to break that resolution right away because we're going to get you so excited that you're going to be wanting to make resolutions to change your life. And so as as we're joking here, the, the topic of resolutions is kind of is a bit uh, I think out there is being a funny, a bit of a joke. It's something many, many people do at this time of year. So what kind of things are people resolving not to do or maybe to start to do at this time of year? Some of the more common New Year's resolution has to do with things like uh, losing weight. Not surprised that that's a, a very big one. Uh Getting more exercise is also a very common New Year's resolution. Uh, For some people, it's getting organized. Another common one is spending more time with the family. Many people realize that the the, the family has gotten lost in the shuffle on on the treadmill of life, on the treadmill of trying to, to, to do business and to gain material wealth. So many people at this time of the year they they come to a point where they're realizing, wow, this year went by and I had no quality family time or I had very little quality time with my family. And so the New Year's resolution is I want to spend more quality time. Uh, for some people, it's things like I, I want to, to, to eat healthier or I want to to, to quit smoking. And so these are, are very, very worthy New Year's resolution, but many people do not have the strategies to, to be able to maintain these resolutions. So we are going to be giving out some some strategies today for to, for to help people to keep their these resolutions. And that leads into my next question. How frequently or infrequently, I should say, do these uh, resolutions that we make year after year actually work? What are the statistics? Should, should we bother making the resolution, Michael? 
Well, there are statistics that show that it's good to make resolution and it's good to make them at this time of the year. Dr. John Norcross, a researcher uh, from the from a clinical psychologist from the University of Scanton, Pennsylvania, did some research regarding resolutions. He studied 400 people and these people fell into three groups. There's a group of people who didn't want to, anything to do with setting any goals. The second group has to do with people who said, yes, we will set goals, but we will not set these goals at New Year. We will set goals at any different time. And then the third group of people in the research were, were people who said, yes, we are going to set our goals and our goals are going to be set at the New Year's time. In, in other words, these are the people that decided that they were going to make New Year's resolutions. So the two group, the one group that said, I will make resol- I will make set goals at any time, resolutions at any time throughout the year, was now compared to the group that made the resolution at New Year's. And what they found is that the group that set, res- set goals at any time of the year, after two weeks, after 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 two weeks, only half remain successful. Only only fifty percent of that group was successful after two weeks. Now they they followed up this group, and at the six months interval, what they found is that only four percent of that group was successful at the six months interval. Interval. They then looked at the group who did their resolution at New Year's, and what they found is that the two weeks mark, seven to one percent of the group was still successful after two weeks, and at the six months interval, forty-six percent of the group who made their 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 goals at New Year's was still successful. So what this means is that the group that made their resolution at New Year's were 10 times more likely to be successful than for people who just made resolutions at other times during the year. 4% compared to 46%. That's a big difference. And so I think it, it, it's very important to know that there, there are some benefits that come from setting New Year's resolution at this particular time, at the end of the year and at the beginning of a new year. So either within this study or within your own practice, what, what was their hypothesis to say, what's so special about New Year's? It's just another date on the calendar. Why does it matter I do it now versus in June, why am I so much more successful if I start something now? In my opinion, there is a psychological advantage that comes from the New Year's date. And I think what the New Year's date does, it gives us this time of reflection, of assessment, of assessing where we are at the end of one period and beginning a new period. So it gives us this this pause, if we might say it, say it that way, where we're able to reflect and say, how do I want to go forward? It also gives us a psychological benefit of the opportunity for a new beginning. So for those of us who might have failed in certain ways, who life has not gone the way we have intended it to go, New Year's is that date when we feel that we have this potential for for a, a change to make things different. I think there's also a psychological power that comes from knowing that you're starting something new. Just this thought that you're heading on, you're, you're starting something new, gives you a psychological energy, a psychological benefit that say, I can be different. I can, I can change. And so the date becomes just much more than just any other day of the year. There is a psychological power that is attached to it and this is this is a scriptural principle as well in in the in in the book of Leviticus chapter 16 we have the story of the day of atonement where where the Israelites were instructed that on the 10th day of the 7th month the priests were to offer a sacrifice for the atonement of the sins of Israel and so that day became a very very powerful day 
in the psyche of the Israelites nation because the, it's as if the people at that time had this reflection, this time to reflect, this time to pause, this time to say, where am I in relation to God and where do I want to go? And so we are told in Leviticus 16 that there was this elaborate ritual that was that was given to the people to the, the scapegoat ritual where the the, the 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 sins of the people were pronounced on the head of this of the scapegoat and that the scapegoat were the scapegoat was was led off into the wilderness never to be seen again so there is this power that comes from a date a specific date and god used that because God could have just said to the Israelites, whatever you want to confess your sins, yes, you can. And yes, there is a, a place for that. But there is also a, a, a powerful driving force that comes from having this one particular day that signifies the end of a period and the beginning of something new. And I think there's there are powers, you say, too, where it's a nation or even for us, it's a world being involved with the this date. It's not just a date special to you. It's special to everyone. everyone. Yes. And everyone's in this act of celebrating this new beginning. Mm -hmm. And so you kind of can get swept up in that momentum, I think, a little bit. Absolutely. And that that's one of the, the, the thing that I would like to say that when we when we think of a date, that date, there, there is a, and I think you, you have hit it on the head when you said there is a, it's special because it's not just any day. It's a day that pertains to everyone. And so it has even more power behind it because it's this time when everyone stop and reflects and starts something new. So now that we've established New Year's in and of itself is a special day that can hopefully give us some degree of success in putting these resolutions forward. What other strategies can we put forward to even maximize our success rate even further? Well, I think it, it's very important for us to, first of all, look at the, the, the fact of what is it that we are trying to accomplish. So when, when we talk about New Year's resolution, it's not just enough to say, I want to accomplish, I want to stop smoking, or I want to to lose weight, or wh whatever it is that you might be, be thinking of. I think a more powerful strategy is to be able to say what it is that you want to achieve. Because I think if you think in terms of just a negative behavior that you want to change, I want to stop smoking, I want to lose weight, yes, there, that, that's good, but it's lacking something. It's a negative. And if, if, you, if you think about it, when you think about something uh, uh, negative, you tend to think about that negative more. So if you think about you want to stop smoking, you're thinking about smoking more. If you think about you want to lose weight, you're thinking about your weight more. So And, and so I think the mind is sometimes sabotaged by that that kind of thinking. So I think it's very important to set your set your resolution in terms of what is it that you are trying to achieve. Yes, you want to lose weight, but what is it that you are going to be benefiting from by losing weight? So you can think in terms of if, if I lose weight, I'm going to be healthier, I could live longer, I get to see the grandkids, I'll have more energy to play with my children, I, I can be more active in life. I'll have a better relationship. I can do more. I'll have more energy to do more fun things with my spouse. And so it's it's important to write those goals out in the positive, not just the negative of I want to lose weight. And I'm but, going on a diet and it's going to be not fun for the next little bit. Because then it becomes a chore. And then you're, you're now just thinking in terms of things that, you, that 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 is unpleasant oh i'm losing weight i have to go on a diet i can't eat and it, by by thinking about it in those terms it become a very tedious task mm -hmm. so that's a great a great starting point so thinking in the positive light changing our mindset is so important but so many people do write those goals down do those things and still aren't successful so what are other things we can put in our toolbox so to speak to optimize our chance of success. I think another important uh, strategy is to be able to plan for setbacks. 
So if you if you think uh, about it, you're not going to be on, you know, just a smooth sailing path where if you want to lose weight, you will never eat that cheeseburger again. If you're addicted to cheeseburger and you love cheeseburgers or you love chips, these favorite types of chips that you, you, you have and you just can't seem to resist the temptation to, to eat that chip. So you... You you need to set a, a have a have a backup plan to say you know what it's very likely that I'm going to fall into temptation that I'm not going to be successful. What is my contingency plan for when I fail? And 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 so it's it's very important because without that plan, what many people do when they fail is that they just give the goal up. They you're not interested anymore because they have broken my resolution. It's no use trying. I've had that burger, you know, and I've had that fries that I said that I wouldn't eat anymore. And so they just go on a binge eating after that. Where if you have a contingency plan to say, when I fail, this is going to be my strategy. I, I will reassess where I am and start again. I will see how long it took me to get to that point before I fell into temptation. And I'm going to go longer the next time. I'm going to, 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 to have a goal that if it took me, if it took me three months before I fell into temptation, well, I'm going to go six months the next time. And so you have these backup strategies, these plan, and you, you, you work with these, with these, with these, uh, plans instead of just making them be, uh, a, 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 a turn off because when you do it it just sets you up to to be discouraged and not not to try anymore so if you've just joined us you're listening to the life transformation radio show which airs every monday at 9 30 today michael and i are talking about new year's resolutions and hopefully strategies that you can employ today as you're starting into this new year season so that you're successful uh, by this time next year, you'll be able to look back on your year and say, I did it. If you've missed the first part of this show, we encourage you to visit our website at elamcounselingministry.com. That's spelled E-L-I-M, counseling with two L's, ministry.com, to check out our the podcast for the show or our past shows as well. Or if you prefer, you can give us a call at 613-699-1677 and we can connect you with a copy of today's broadcast or our past shows. So Michael, you had talked about um, planning for setbacks and something you had talked about before in before we started taping today's show was the power of temptation and how some people underestimate that power in their life. And there's some strategies we can take to sort of mitigate that. Yes, absolutely. I think we, we need to respect the power of temptation. And I think there, there are some of us where we say that we want to quit a certain habit, but then we set up ourselves for failure. We, we, we sabotage ourselves. And it can be anything from, you know, a person who is trying to, to, to heat to eat healthily, uh, going to the supermarket and bringing home these bags of chips that they're trying to, to quit eating. Or they buy these cookies that they, they know are very high in calories and that is, is unhealthy. And they have them stored in the cupboard, but they're not going to eat them. But right, they but call to you in the middle of the <laughs> night. I'm that person. I cannot have certain types of potato chips in my house or I'll eat them all by myself in one sitting. So I think it's very important to note that self-monitoring is more important than self-control. Because self-control is only good up to a certain point. And if you don't respect the power of temptation, then it's going to become a certain, it, you're going to get to a certain place where you're, you just can't resist the urge anymore. So it, it, it could be anything from that simple example that I gave about the, the bag of chips or the cookies to a person who is trying to quit smoking. Respect the power of temptation because if you put yourself in a situation where you, you continue to hang out with friends who smoke and you said, yes, you know what, I, I, I can hang with these friends and my resolution is not to smoke again, but you're around these people who are smoking all the times, you're going to pubs where where, where you know they they are smoking or they are going outside to smoke and you're in that in that situation you're not respecting the power of temptation 
another example is a person who the, the, the goal might be to, 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 to get over porn addiction, to, to, to quit sex addiction. If you put yourself in a position where you're alone with the computer and you're up late at night, then you are not respecting the power of temptation. So I want to change the, the mindset from one where you think about achieving these goals as if, you know, I, I need to muster up this self-control. I need to muster up this will to, 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 to not give in to temptation. I need to change that because that's the wrong way of looking at it. I want you to think about it in terms of self-monitoring. What can I do to monitor myself so that I don't get into temptation. Even the Lord's Prayer tells us, where, where Jesus teaches us to pray, says, lead us not into temptation. So there is there there is a recognition there of the power of temptation. And if we don't recognize the power of temptation, then we are going to be careless. We are going to begin to set up ourselves for failure. If 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 your 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 goal is to exercise more, then get those jogging shoes out. Leave them at the front door so that you can see them. And so if you if you do that, then you're you're more likely to overcome the, the temptation to just do nothing because those shoes, every time you go through the door, you're going to see them and you're going to be reminded that this is something that you need to do. Have that gym bag packed so you don't have to say, Oh, but I have to pack it and I have to do that. Have it ready so you can go or pack right. your lunch so you don't get tempted at the calf or whatever your your vice may be. What other strategies can people start taking today? to get them through their resolution successfully? A very powerful strategy is visualization. And I think when we begin to visualize things, it becomes more real to the mind. And so... If 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 we it is said a picture is is worth a, a, a thousand words. So when you think about losing weight, what does that look like? What would what would you look like if you were to lose that weight? When you, when you when you think of spending more time with the family, what does that look like? What do you see yourself doing with the family? If you just said, "Oh, spend more time with the family," time is an abstract concept. It doesn't mean anything to the brain. It doesn't give the brain anything to to hook into that can be meaningful. But when you start to visualize spending more time with the family mean I'm going to be throwing balls with my son at the at the park or I'm going to be be be, be coaching his soccer team I'm going to be volunteering with his soccer team or we're going to be be kicking uh, the, the soccer ball together in the backyard or we're going to go on this vacation now the brain has something to to work with because this now begins to, to, to create something concrete. It's not just this abstract time. It's no more concrete. And, it, and, and it's something that now gives you the, the, the power to be energized because it, it now becomes. So, so I would say if you, if you're thinking to lose weight, you can do simple things like go on to Google images. Find the, the picture of a body type that could represent what it is that you would look like after you lose that weight. Put it on the, the door of your refrigerator. Put it on your bathroom mirror. When Jesus was was uh, trying to motivate the Israelites to remember him and to be mindful of the exodus, he said some very powerful things to them. He, he, he talks about that, that, that kind of visualization where they were to hang reminders on the doorposts of their houses, where, where they were to talk about it when, to their children when they walk along, along the street and when they sit down to eat. So I think if you're able to, to, to visualize things and, and, and to have symbols that represent these things, pictures, it makes it more real, real to you. And as you're describing that, I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer, Michael, I swear I'm not. But when people are setting these goals, is there an element when you're trying to visualize that people also need to be realistic in the goals that they set? If you've never been 60 pounds, well, that's really, really low. If you've never been 100 pounds other than when you were 10 years old, is it realistic to say, I will be 100 pounds at the end of the year if you're starting off at something higher than that? Or 
Same thing with smoking. You've been smoking for 30 years. I'm going to go cold turkey, quit everything. Is there an element of realism that people have to have in this visualization? Or do you say shoot for the stars, go for the gusto? That, that's such a, a very good point, Melissa, because I think sometimes we, we, we subconsciously sabotage ourselves because we don't really want to be successful. And so we might say to ourselves, yes, I want to lose weight. But when you set a goal that's unrealistic, what you're actually saying is that I want to make sure that this is unattainable so I can find a way to quit. So the goal for someone might be, you know what, I want to go back to to school and they're the sole breadwinner of the family and they will say to themselves something like, you know what, I'm going to quit my job, I'm going to go to school full time next year. And it never happens because they need to, the family needs the income. And so that kind of uh, unrealistic goal setting sets a person in a situation where they'll never do something. And maybe there is a fear about doing this thing. And so they set goals that are too big to be accomplished. So, so it's subconscious sabotage. Whereas the person who wants to go back to school, if they really meant it, they will say something like, you know what, I can't go full time because I need to support my family, but I'm going to do two subjects this this year. And I'm going to chip away. My goal for next year is to do two subjects for the entire year. And the next year I'll do another two. And I'll build build towards that that career, that, that second career that I need in, in, in a way that it, I'll chip away at it like one block at a time instead of these big. So similar for losing weight. If you are over 300 pounds and you pick an image from Google to say, next year I'm going to be down to 120 or 130. It's, it's just not realistic. It's too big of a, of a jump. So I, I think your point is, is well taken that we need to have realistic goals. And so now that we've got our goals established, we are starting to change our mindset. Is there anything else that people can start to do to get them through this this resolution? Time? Yes, I, I think uh, an, another powerful strategy that I, I touched on earlier when I talked about the Day of Atonement, and that strategy is the use of rituals. There are rituals that we do that maintains bad behavior, but there are new rituals that we can, we can create that symbolize change. So when God instituted the day of atonement, he came up with a very specific ritual that symbolized the forgiveness of sin, that sin was been carried away from the people, that people's sins were taken away from them. And that ritual was, was very simple, but very powerful, because when the people saw this ritual being enacted, it, 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 it became something concrete that their minds could, could wrap around and could digest. So the ritual that I talked about earlier had to do with the scapegoat. And on the Day of Atonement, and in the seventh month, the tenth day of the seventh month, what the priest would do, the high priest would do was to pronounce the sins of the people on the head of this goat. And as he made that statement, after making that statement, someone would lead that goat away into the wilderness, never to be seen again. So that goat going out into the wilderness symbolized that, that the sins of the people were being taken away. So your ritual can be, maybe you, 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 you write some of the, the, the bad behaviors that you want to give up, write them on a, on a gas balloon, let them go into the atmosphere so that as you see that going up, it means that these bad behaviors are going away. It can mean writing things that you want to, to, to let go of on a paper and burning it. That can be a ritual. It can, it, it can mean burying, write something and burying it. And so there are many different kinds of rituals. And if you want to know more about types of rituals, rituals are very powerful and God used rituals throughout the Old Testament to the New Testament. The, the, the communion was a ritual. And so if you want to learn more about types of ritual, you can use, give us a call at 613-699-1677 and be happy to help you. We have come to the end of today's show. And so if you want to find out more, you can also go to our website at elimcounselingministry.com. It was great joining you today, Michael, and I wish people much success in their New Year's resolution. Time goes by so quickly when, when we are having fun. It's hard <laughs> exactly. to believe that, 
that we just started and, and we're we are out of time. Remember, if you need a free copy of this show or any other show, give us a call 613-699-1677 and we'll be happy to send you a, f- a free CD for a donation. So let me, let me wish you all the very best for the New Year's. May all your resolutions be successful. May God richly bless you and your family in the new year. So until next time, this is your host, Michael Hart of Elam Counseling Services. And Melissa Waggett. Praying together that God would bless you in all your relationships and to keep you sound in mind and pure in heart. Thank you for listening. Thank you.